You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Ahoy, me farties, and welcome to yet another all-singing, all-dancing episode of Radio Nonsense, the official comedy club for kids podcast that is suitable for everyone of all ages, from as young as an egg to as old as a really stinky old stinky gone-off stinky egg. I know you're already thinking, but Tiernan, and I would say, don't put butt before my name, that makes me sound like I'm a butt. And you would say, how do you know what I'm thinking? Are you a psychic butt? And I would say, I'm not a butt, and you're thinking very loudly and it's ruining my soup. And you would say, but Tiernan, you just said it was an all-singing, all-dancing episode of the podcast. And I would say, it is. It's just, it's not my fault that I have a very flat, boring singing voice that just sounds like I'm talking. Or that because this is an audio podcast, you can't see all the amazing dance moves I'm doing right now. I'm doing jazz hands. Like I'm doing jazz hands right this very second while spinning on my knee. It's very impressive and my knee is very sore. You also can't see the chorus of dancing otters behind me or Derek, the performative dance crossing guard, who's very slowly reimagining the time he went to the zoo and lost his ice cream, but in a series of arm movements and bum wiggles. It's really very good and very, very moving. But obviously, uh, this podcast is done on a shoestring budget, so you'll just have to imagine all of that. And if you don't know what a shoestring budget is, um, it's the amount of money I'd get if I sold one of my shoestrings. And I did try, but I was told they were too dirty from coming undone and going in puddles too often. So uh, I'd have to pay someone to take my shoestring away. So I did, and I now have 10p less and my shoe keeps falling off, which is making the dancing really, really tricky. Anyway, look, enough about me. Jazz hands, spit on the other knee. Um, How are you? Um, Thank you so much for sending in so many great questions for me to ask comedians, um, all of which will be featured in upcoming podcasts. Um, If you haven't had a response from me yet or you haven't heard your question yet, don't worry, it will come. Please be patient. Um, I've got a lot of questions and a lot of comedians uh, to ask them uh, to. Um, Also, um, like this week's Oscar did, um, thank you for those of you who sent little recordings of you asking the question, um, which is a really lovely thing to do. Um, and if you do get your weary farting giant frubes or go gurts for our American listeners, and sorry, obviously I just mean grown ups, um, if you do get your grown ups to help you send in a recording, then I can pop your voice on the episode too, which is really exciting, isn't it? Though obviously uh, any dancing you do while asking it won't be able to be seen, so uh, you may as well just sit down. Also, uh, and this is very important information, if you are a listener who's not in the UK, then hello, welcome and how exciting that you listen. But also, please do send us your questions by email at podcast at comedy club for kids Because if you put it in your lovely review of the podcast um, that you may put on one of the podcast websites, then I might not be able to see it as the Apple people who are, in fact, giant apples. They're quite scary, actually. Um, they hide those uh, reviews from me um, if they're not from the UK, unless I do some clever clever internet searching which i can't do right now as i'm too busy dancing and singing obviously also 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 um we've been doing lots of very very fun online comedy club for kids shows and uh, we've done some for schools we've done some for birthday parties we're going to do one for some scouts very soon um if you would like uh, to have some online comedians performing just for you uh, then please do get in touch via our website at comedy club and hopefully we can make you um giggle until you nearly wee yourself in your own home Oh, and uh, thanks, of course, also to everyone for not sending in any more stinky hippos. Uh, That was really horrible last week. And the place smells a lot nicer now, despite the dancing offers who are. Despite the dancing otters who are a bit whiffy. Right, hang on, big flip, and then backflip, and balance on my nose. And on to today's questions that must be answered! Jazz hands! (laughs) I am joined on today's show. With Abigailia, also known as Westminster Abigailia, which doesn't make sense as she's not from Westminster. Abigailia Dabigailia, the <laughs> world's most dangerous biscuit fighter and twice global champion in humming a tune with her eyes closed. Um, how are you, Abigailia? Are you all right? I am great. Uh, I, am, I am living my dreams here in lockdown. I've watched all of Netflix. All of it? Um, every bit of it. Um, it's been exhausting, but someone had to do it. What happens when you when you've watched all of it? Do you get a little like uh, trophy, or do do you get a nice message that says you've completed it? Or 
I, you know, what they do is Netflix, you know how you'll watch things for hours and it'll be like, are you still watching? It gets really passive aggressive to you. If you watch several episodes in a row, it double checks that you're still there. And you're like, don't judge me, Netflix. If you watch all of Netflix, you just get one message that pops up on your TV and it just goes, you okay, hon? So, <laughs> oh, that's nice. It checks in. But I was hoping it would congratulate you because I feel like that's quite an achievement to watch. Absolutely. I mean, you'll have watched all the cartoons, all the dramas, all the horrors. You'll have seen all those weird documentaries about how wasps are a conspiracy or, you know, things like that. And yeah. that I mean, that's an achievement. I've, I've really done my level best. I know more about aliens than I ever needed to know now. And uh, turns out, totally real. They're out there, kids. Never forget. Wow. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I've, and now I've, I've moved on to uh, Disney Plus, which, by the way, uh, do you have Disney Plus? I do have Disney Plus, yes. And I'm just wondering, as a... British person, because as an American, when you like you have all like the Marvel and the new stuff. But if you dig into the archives, it has everything from your childhood that you forgot was a TV show. Like yeah. they have the gummy bears. Yeah. Amazing Bouncing show. And there and everywhere. Mm. It's so good. And I was like, I forgot about the gummy bears. And here they are again. Oh, my God. I'm really enjoying it. But also for a lot of the listeners who will be too young to remember things like gummy bears. There's a lot of films on Disney Plus that I used to watch on a Sunday afternoon. And they'd be about this dog needs to find its way home. And it's joined by a cat and a sad squirrel. And they will run through fields. And it was always like some sort of weird film about like a real dog, but there'd be somebody doing a voiceover for the dog. Like, I just want to find my way home. And there's loads of those Specifically, it was Michael J. Fox and Sally Field played the cat. <laughs> That's... <laughs> you know exactly which one I'm talking about. Yeah. Homer Bound. That's a really good one, though. If kids haven't watched it, that's a, that's a fun one, I think. There it's very, it's very emotional. It's a bit of a tearjerker. It is. It but is in a good emotional. way. Yeah, I do. I hope Disney Plus uh, sponsor us for this. I think do, they will, they, will they chase us down? Will they have to own this podcast instead? It, probably. Well, it is Disney and they are the corporate overlords of all entertainment. And I think they try to just absorb everything that they don't already own. So the fact that we've mentioned it. Yeah, you're going to get a message and just be like, congratulations, you're now part of the the you are a new cog in the wheel. I'm really scared that, that I'll just get the phone ringing. I'll pick up and I'll, oh, hello, we own you now. <laughs> and, ah, no, what? no, Mickey, no. <laughs> I I should say that my daughter makes me talk to me talk as Mickey Mouse to her for hours on end. That's why she watches Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and then she'll only communicate me with me if I talk like Mickey Mouse or like Goofy. Otherwise, uh, we can't have a conversation. So that's my <laughs> life. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, it's like that endlessly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you've you've completed all of Netflix, um, and and otherwise you're doing all all right, and uh, you're obviously stuck at home like the rest of us. Yeah, I'm stuck at home. Things have uh, gotten a little weird. Um, I'm sure your listeners know that, like, when you're home this much and around, like, I just live with one other person. I live with my boyfriend. And, um, you know, you because it's just us. <sighs> OK, here's the thing, Tiernan. Um, we moved into this new flat. We discovered we have a, a mouse and I've never had a mouse. Uh, live in my home while being in Britain and I was like oh no there's a mouse if there's one there's many and Tom's like no 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 there's probably only one it's fine it's fine uh, and I was like we have to get traps we have to get rid of it and uh, and he's like well we can't get like traps that kill them because they're awful so we got a um, one of those traps that it'll crawl into and it shuts a, a humane trap so yeah. then you can set it free so I was like, don't worry, Tom, I will get rid of the mouse. By the time the trap showed up, Tom has already ma named the mouse oh. and he's called Gus. Oh, that's a great <laughs> name for a mouse. And he, he kind of, he lives under the um, like kitchen cupboards. So you'll see him drop out and he's very bold because he'll just walk out and look at you and be like, don't mind me and take a crumb and walk away. <laughs> and I'm like, 
I'm like, no, 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 Tom, we have to get rid of the mouse. And my boyfriend is like, if we actually catch it, we can't set it free outside because it's cold. And I was like, it's a mouse. It's very, it, it, it'll survive. They're resourceful. Again, we've both watched Homeward Bound, so we know the possibilities mm. of animals in nature. Absolutely. And, um, and so I've set up this trap, and I'll see Gus comes out. And I've put lots of peanuts and chocolate and all this good stuff in the trap. And he'll come out, and he likes to go up to the trap and walk around the trap. And he's even walked on top of the trap. But he won't go in the trap. And, it's, and it was getting frustrating. But I was like, you know what it, it, the problem is? My floor is not clean enough. If there's no food on the floor, Gus will go in the trap. So I cleaned my whole floor. I went to bed. My boyfriend stayed awake. And the next morning I woke up and I was like, oh, we didn't catch Gus. What a problem. Uh, maybe next time. And my boyfriend's like, I have a confession. He's like, Gus went in the trap last night. And I was like, what did you did you take him outside? Did you set him free? He's like, no, 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 no. Because he was really stressed in the trap. He was very sad to be in the <laughs> trap. So I just opened it and let him out. And I was like, Tom, the whole point was so we could set him free. And and my boyfriend's like, well, I think the reason why I went in the trap was because the floor was too clean. So what I've done is I've taken some of the peanuts and I've crushed them up and I've put them <laughs> underneath the floorboards so he's not hungry anymore. And I'm like, Tom, this isn't, I have to get the mouse. And, and if you just tell me, you can wake me up and I will go outside and set the mouse free. And he's like, no you're not allowed to take him outside because it's too cold. And I was like, well, that's where mice live. He goes, no, they live indoors. So now I've made an agreement with my boyfriend that if the mouse gets caught again, one of the apartments or one of the flats in my, in, in my area is an Airbnb. So no one's in there. So I've made the agreement that if we catch him again, I will not put him outside. Instead, I will post him through the letterbox of an empty <laughs> house so he can go live in there. So that's where we're at. Uh, Tom has one friend, Gus, and I have one enemy who is Gus. Oh, that's that's amazing. The, the problem is, is as soon as you name any of these creatures, then they, it becomes much harder to to get rid of them. Um, I don't like spiders at all, but there's a spider in our flat and my daughter has called it Mimi and always wants to know where Mimi is. And now we can't get rid of Mimi because no. it's Mimi the spider. Whereas I'm like, oh, it's a horrible spider. It needs to go out. No, it's Mimi. And it's now my daughter's friend. So therefore yeah. Mimi has to live in the bathroom being all horrible and creepy. So uh, yeah. which I, I can't stand. Do you know, I, I was going to say- I, I will to... say the, the one oh. difference there though, Tiernan, is that your daughter is two and three quarters, as you said, and my boyfriend <laughs> is 35. Yes, that is different. But I, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I, I think that, you know, it shows that he's uh, obviously a very caring person. And like, I do yes, often yes. think that, that, you know, you said that the trap is humane, but the, the mouse isn't a human. So, you know, you need a mouse main trap, don't you? Yeah, that's true. Because he gets, he got in there and I guess Tom was like, he was squeaking a lot. He was really stressed out because, you know, he's then, he's then in a little cage. Mm. And he doesn't know why that happened to him. He was like, I thought we were having a good time, guys. I thought yeah. we had an agreement. What about if I don't go cage, on countertops? What about if in the little cage you put like a sleeping bag and a small TV and like made it like his own Airbnb? Yeah, that's what I was actually thinking, because for a while I had loads of peanuts in there because mice are supposed to be attracted to the smell of peanuts and they were salted. And I was like, I should probably put some water in there for him as well. <laughs> in case he gets thirsty. <laughs> I also I also really like the idea that he'll end up at that Airbnb and then someone will visit it for the first time. And he'll just be in there, like using the place like his own, sitting on the sofa. Yeah, I mean, living it up in this. I upgraded. I was just in someone's kitchen before, but now they've they give me my whole own flat. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I was going to ask if you had a tip for being stuck at home, but I, I feel like that's the best fun you can have for months. Uh, almost sort of, you know, just have a, have a war with someone that you live with about whether or not to keep a mouse. Well, I feel like, uh, and again, I don't know, the children might not uh, get this reference, but do you remember, have you ever seen Caddyshack? 
No, I haven't. I know about Caddy Shack. Oh, yes. never mind. Then. So it's a reference that there's I won't a... get and the listeners won't get. But please explain. Okay, you know what? Forget this. Uh, but there is a... <laughs> There is a there is a uh, um, uh, oh my god! You know what? I'm gonna st- stop this story right here because I don't even remember the name of the actor. <laughs> Bill Murray. It was Bill Murray. Has a he's a groundskeeper at a golf course, and he has a full on war with a gopher throughout the movie. And that's me and Gus because I I'm trying to get rid of him, and he's just he's just delightfully intelligent and always having a good time. And he means no harm, but he's not going anywhere. It's because you named him Gus. It's too nice a name. Like you should have given him like yeah. a really awful name. I, I can't think yeah. what an awful name would be. Even like Bernard. You'd be Matt like, oh. Hancock. <laughs> Matt Hancock the mouse. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. He'd be now. Your, uh, you know, your boyfriend wouldn't have liked him at all then. And uh, yeah, I think that's I it. If we just give them names of things and and people we don't like, then you could get rid of them. Yeah, maybe that's the plan. Exactly. Wow. Well, that's an intense story. That's a uh, you've completed Netflix. You've had a war with a mouse. I feel like. You've really been having an exciting life uh, these past few months. Um, this is obviously this is obviously an audio podcast, and the listeners um, can't well they can't see any of uh, the exciting tale about a mouse. They can only hear it. Um, but I wonder that because this is audio and it's for people's ears, um, I wondered if you have a favourite noise, Abigail, that you'd like to share with us. I mean, just the uh, simple like uh, fart noise, but the one where you put your hand. Uh, you have to put your whole palm against your mouth and then like kind of blow raspberries so it sounds like this wow give it a nice airy wet feel to it but it's it's pretty dry yeah so and also, uh, it went on for a really good amount of time yeah you just need a deep breath if you cup both of your hands together so your wrists are are touching and your fingers are facing outward and then you put it over your mouth, like uh, it, it even makes a better, it makes a better noise. It's even. Whoa. Why have you not used That's that to drive Gus away? Maybe I should. By the way, I do. Uh, Tom has taken pictures of Gus, so I will send them to you afterwards so you can put them on the social medias if the kids want to see will, what Gus I will try like. and put them on the podcast so if, if any of you are listening to this and playing it on a on a device where you can see the picture hopefully a, a picture of Gus will pop up It'd be very exciting um right well that was an amazing noise thank you for that that was brilliant um the properly good fart noise there and uh also obviously this show is uh family friendly it's for, suits for everyone of all ages um and so I, I just wanted to double check that you know that and if you could tell us a rude word that you definitely won't be saying uh during this show Schmoofus doofus. Whoa! Oh my goodness! That is wow. I'm pleased you won't be saying that. That's one of the worst words I've ever heard. It's pretty bad. My dad used to call us that when we were mad, when he was mad. So that's how I know it's a bad word. Schmoofus uh, doofus. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, he, yeah. We do something silly, and he go, "You schmoofus doofus." Wow, that's harsh. That's and if we long. were, if we were being really silly, he would call us. A schmoofus doofus alamatoofus, which is like, then you know you're in trouble. Yeah, I'm glad you're not using that on this show. I'd have to give it a whole new rating. I don't think we could call it a kids podcast anymore. That is outrageous. What is the second bit? Alamadoofus. Alamatoofus. Oh, Alamatoofus. Oh, Alamatoofus. Oh, well, goodness, that was, um, I wasn't expecting something so harsh, but I'm really pleased that you won't be saying that even once on this show. So no, thank you never, very much. never would I say schmoofus doofus alamatoofus. No, please never, don't never. say it even once. Wow. Oh, awful. Right. Well, the reason you're here, um, the reason you're here, Abigail, obviously it's very nice to see you, but there is a, a reason and that is that we've had a question sent in and I think that you are the perfect person to answer this question. So uh, this question has been sent in from Willow, age date in Stockholm. And um, in fact, she sent us in a little voice message for it too. So have a listen. Hello, my name is Willow and I'm eight and I'm super duper 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 silly. My question is, why do kids think poop is funny? For example, instead of the right words, I actually say poo 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 because that's what my brother does. Bye. So there you go, Abigail. That is the question. Why do kids think poop is funny? And obviously we've got the example there of Willow's brother um, and exactly how he says it. Poop, 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 poop. And he uses the word poop in songs um, instead of the real words, which I, I wonder, I don't know if you 
like I, I can't think of any songs where poop would work better. There must be some good ones. I mean, you know, you know, uh, the uh, Baja gang wrote a song called Who Let the Dogs Out, which you could change the ver- the <laughs> chorus to Who Let the Dogs Out? Poop, 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 poop. Who Let the Dogs Out? Poop, 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 poop. Yeah, that's pretty that. good, actually. That's, I prefer that version, I do have to say. That's pretty <laughs> good. Yeah, there's also there's that song, isn't there? The Sheep Sheep song, which could then become the Poop Poop song. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I like that a lot. There's quite a few. Well, hang on. I think we should get... Well, I feel like we've jumped ahead here. Willow wanted to know, why do kids think poop is funny? Why is it... Why? I mean, it is... Not just kids, Willow. I think it's funny. But Yeah, it's a great word. And uh, Willow, I, uh, I applaud you for using the word poop with a P on the end because it is the funniest word. Whereas, uh, like, as an American, I always said poop as a little kid, just like you in Stockholm. We share a similar uh, English vernacular. But the British children I've met over here say poo with no P on the end, which I don't think is nearly as funny, you know, because poop, it's just, it, mm. it, it's, it's, it poop, it's, it's the noise, it, it. It's the noise it makes when it hits the toilet, you know? It's just that little splash is like, poop! And uh, in the extra, you know, end letter there, it makes sense. Because every time you have a poo, there's always an extra P. Um, it's, it's one of the best words. I, I genuinely think to, to put on my comedian's hat uh, and really do analyze it thank you um i made it myself while watching all of netflix because you have to have something to do with your hands that makes sense um it is it things that are private or a bit taboo which means forbidden can be very fun because we're not supposed to talk about it because if we think about when we go poop we we shut the door and it's a time that maybe we're by ourselves and uh, so then when you go out of the bathroom, you have to tell everyone how exciting that time was. Because how good is a good poop? I mean, as an adult, I've been told you aren't supposed to talk about it. But I mean, in the morning, when I wake up, if I have a good poop, the first person I tell is Gus the mouse. Because it's, it's the best part of a day. It should be celebrated. Yeah, I, I fully agree. You have a good poop. It's exciting. And the rest of the day is like, well, I started a day with a poop. And then it can only, yeah. it can only get better from there. And uh, that's Exactly. A, it's a very, but I think you're right. I think it's the way it sounds is why it's really funny, isn't it? Because poo isn't as yeah. funny. Like if there was, and we were talking about Disney Plus earlier, and Winnie the Pooh is on Disney Plus, he would be much better if he was Winnie the Poop. Oh, God, that would be great. Yeah. Winnie the Poop. Winnie the Poop. <laughs> Tubby, little tubby, all stuff with fluff. That's a great one right there. It'd be far, far better. And I, I think it must just be, why, you know, how it sounds really. But also I think poop is very funny. I mean, like, you know, if there was a, a poop in an unexpected place, that's automatically far funnier. Like a poop in the loo yeah, is funny. I mean, how, but... how, how fun is it to trip? Well, it's how fun is it to watch someone else accidentally step in a poop on the sidewalk? When it's you, it's not funny. But when it's your parents, it's the best. Well, that's the same, the same like if a bird poops on someone. If it's not you, it's funny. But if they poop on you, it's not funny. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's meant to be lucky. But poop is, yeah. That's what I've been told every time I've been pooped on by a bird. But you know what? I didn't feel lucky at the time. <laughs> Well, but the bird chose you. The bird could have chosen anyone else or a statue, as they often do. And they chose you and said, you know what? You look good enough to poop on. I'm going to poop on you. And it's pretty Yeah, lucky. well, that being said, that's why I try not to stand still anymore. Because I've seen those statues and I'm like, I'm not going to be like you. So whenever I go outside, even if I'm not walking somewhere, I make sure to be moving constantly. <laughs> so the birds don't think I'm a statue anymore. Well, that's a really good point because, uh, you know, you're meant to for exercise, you're meant to move every day for a certain amount. Mm-hmm. And and actually birds are the best motivators for that, aren't they? Like birds birds are basically little gym coaches saying, if you don't move, I'm going to poop on you. And that's the scariest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, but you're right. It's it's not funny when you step in people, you get poop on you, but it is very funny when someone else does. So maybe when we're talking about poop, we're only talking about it happening to other people. It's a bit of a Sean and Freuden thing, isn't it? It's funny when it happens to other people. Well, it's it's funny when you poop. It's funny when other people get pooped on. Yes, that's exactly it. So that's that's got to be why poop is very, very funny. I think it's just... yeah. It's amazingly funny. And and then and then her brother uses it in songs. And that's because I don't think there's enough songs with poop in. No, I, I, I'm i I'm struggling to think of like a uh, a really good song that has the word poop in it. Uh, uh, like we said, we can put it into songs. The Shoop song, great one for poop. Uh, Winnie the Poop, fabulous. Yeah. What are some? I'm trying was, to think uh, of some other songs. Again, a lot of the listeners will be they won't know this, but there was there used to be a character called Betty Boop, and um, and now she could be Betty Poop, and uh, Betty, Betty, Poop. Betty Betty Poop just pooping the poop, and uh, that suddenly becomes a much better song. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I, I I got the feeling I don't know if you've heard this but from Willow's uh, voicemail I I had a feeling that maybe she didn't find it as funny as her brother does yeah and so, I mean some people don't find poop as as funny and um I just you know what if, if you don't find it funny maybe you don't find your own poop funny but let's go back to the fact that when other people encounter poop that's not theirs that will always be funny Willow I want you to think about that. I want you to think about, I want you to close your eyes and just imagine your brother being pooped on by a bird and you will find that poop very funny. Is That is already very funny. But is you said bird and bird is very funny. Are there animals that would be funnier to poop on a brother? Because part of me thinks like if he got pooped on by a yak, I think I'd laugh for the rest of my life. So my uh, my niece, uh, uh, who lives here in London, is 10 years old, and she has guinea pigs. And Tom and I, my boyfriend, got to go see them. And my boyfriend was holding one of the guinea pigs. And it's so cute and so soft and making all these cute noises. And my boyfriend's like, oh, my gosh, the little guinea pig, so sweet, so sweet. And the guinea pig then proceeded to poop all over him. And that was that was a good day for me. Yeah, that's very, very funny. That is, and automatically they're not cute anymore. It's like, ah, this is what, hang on, this is what you need to do with Gus. If Gus poops on your boyfriend, then maybe he won't want Gus around anymore. Oh, that's a very clever idea. I will have to somehow lure Gus onto Tom. Okay. Uh, what I, I think what I need is um, some lettuce, so Gus is full of fiber, so mm. things pass easily. And then I need a, I need to put Tom. I, how do I, how do I get Gus onto Tom? Because Gus won't let me pick him up. He is a wild animal. Like mm. he won't let me get near him. How do I do this? He's a wild animal that Maybe may live if, in an Airbnb. <laughs> that may live in an Airbnb uh, within weeks. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I, I guess. Okay, here's what I need to do. Because Gus, the one good thing about Gus is he hasn't figured out how to get up on counters or anything. Mm. So he only lives on the floor. So I think I'll have to do the very um, uh, sneaky thing of just tying my boyfriend to the floor and putting bits of cheese on him. And so when he's on the floor with covered in cheese, Gus will be like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited, cheese. And he'll crawl up on top and he'll nibble on the cheese and then he'll poop all over his chest. And then Tom, actually, if I tie my boyfriend to the floor and cover him with cheese, I don't think he'll kick Gus out of the house. He might just kick me out of the house. <laughs> but he'll be covered in poop, so he won't want to go out of the house to do it. So I think you'd be safe. That's true. Yeah. See, again, someone getting pooped on by a mouse, that's automatically very funny. Yeah, very fun. Yeah, I think, Willow, maybe maybe you need to just imagine different things pooping on say your brother and i think you'll get there i think you'll understand why it's funny yeah it's got to be the way exactly to yeah cool well, exactly. i think I, I think i think you've answered that perfectly i knew you were the person to come to with a question about poop i think about poop a lot <laughs> who, who 
does. I should also say that one thing we haven't mentioned is every everybody and everything poops. So that's why it's yeah. something that we all automatically can r- relate. To. We can relate to it. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. Yeah, it's it's something we all do, and uh, and it's something that we uh, like. I said. Um, when you do it well, you feel like you've really achieved something that day. Yeah. And and I should just say, Willow, if, if you haven't pooped ever in your life, then um, see someone about it. Because maybe you might be really full of poop and that would be terrifying. Um, and you probably feel quite full. Yeah. Yeah. Your belly, your belly would stick out like Santa Claus's belly. Yeah. If it, you were so full, you'd be full of Poop. poop yeah and i think you'd fart endlessly as well it wouldn't be very nice yeah, yeah it wouldn't be very nice um good well i i feel like we've answered that perfectly i i don't think willow could have any more questions of why poop is funny she's got to understand that now hasn't she that's i hope so i hope you do willow and um and again if you don't think your own poop is funny like we said you just have to imagine different animals pooping imagine an elephant pooping on your brother and how big that poo would be oh my gosh that would be a good time you'd have to get a spade to dig your brother out that would be it would take you days see, <laughs> there was there was a, a a meme going on the internet Tiernan, of someone going this is what 2020 is and it's two women behind an elephant and i guess the elephant had uh not pooped in a while so they like were trying to help remove uh. some poo from its bum and then the elephant just sprayed them with with oh, with no. all the backed up poop uh, uh, see now now tiernan doesn't think <laughs> poop is funny hey, he's hey. got his hands on his face and he's like this is awful and and it was awful, but you couldn't look away. That's another thing. It's so gross, but you're just like I can't stop watching. It's but uh, it is funny, but also that is horrible. And I, the amount of poop they must have been covered in is horrendous. But they were zookeepers. They had to know that was coming. Yeah. That couldn't have been their first deed pooping. Of I think you'll find they were poo keepers. <laughs> oh! Boom. <laughs> Uh, or poop, poop keepers would have been better but there we go that's it well thank you i'd be glad that was fantastic and, and i i guess um now that you've answered this book question what what do you do with the rest of your day have you got to just chase a mouse around with i sort of imagine a tom and jerry type scenario where you're chasing gus around the house with a with a pan or something yeah that's actually a more relatable uh analogy than me being like have you ever seen caddyshack yeah so um Gus usually comes out at night, so after this, I'll probably have a have a nap. So I'll be awake this evening when he comes out, and uh, and I will either catch him. You know what? Maybe I should just show him pictures of the Airbnb on my computer, so he gets excited to yeah. go there. I'll be like, "Listen, man, it's hard to be locked down with two people." As roommates, it's hard to be locked down with flatmates or roommates. And and I think you're ready for your own place. And maybe I can coax them out with like wonderful real estate. I think that's hopefully. a really good idea. I mean, I did I did wonder if you've ever had that, you know, um and, and a lot of the listeners will may probably have had their parents ask them similar things, their grown ups ask them similar things, you know, but we we've already done it with flatmates where you go, Okay, you live here, maybe you could do the washing up on a Monday, maybe you could tidy your room a little bit. Have you have you tried sitting Gus down and just said, Look, you live in here, but you know, please clean up after yourself, maybe, you know, give us some money for food. Yeah, you know, I've tried, and it's almost like he doesn't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> that's weird. That's just rude. I know. Very rude. You know, it, it. that's the thing. I wouldn't mind Gus staying if he, like, helped out with the rent. And, uh, again, like you said, cleaned up after himself. Uh, I mean, technically, I suppose he cleans up after me because he picks up all of my uh crumbs on the floor so maybe he thinks he's doing enough but as we know when you have flatmates they never do nearly as much because you want them to do all the work so you don't have to do any of the work i mean to be fair he does more cleaning than my daughter does so maybe i need to talk to her about an airbnb (laughs) uh scenario um cool well thank you it was brilliant having you on thank you so much for answering willow's incredibly important question and uh hopefully we see you soon thank you thank you so much Yes, man. So, no. <laughs>
Thanks so much to Abigail Shaman for her expert poop knowledge. And Willow, I do hope that now uh, you either also find poops funny, uh, now that you understand exactly why they are funny, or at least can understand and sympathise with your brother's songs. Maybe just regularly imagine him getting pooped on by an elephant to cheer you up whenever those songs get too annoying. Unlike my songs, obviously, which I am singing right now and constantly. Now, Abigail has a YouTube channel called Just Like Mum Made, where she cooks up Midwestern US meals like, well, her mum made while being very, very funny about it. But I've got to warn you, please check with your weary farting giant froobs, sorry, grown ups before watching them, because it is pretty much suitable for everyone of all ages. But she very, very occasionally says a rude word, possibly even more rude than Smoofus Doofus. But otherwise, you might learn how to make some tasty grub. So do check before you watch. And of course, if you have any questions about poop or other really, really important things like dance moves, mice or just, well, anything you like, then please get your grown-ups to help you send them into podcast at comedyclub4kids.co.uk as well as anything you want to tell us and it will get answered in a future episode. And now for the big finale, la... And wow, that was really spectacular. Uh, shame you missed that. The otters all balanced on top of each other to form the shape of a slice of Emmental cheese and Derek fell over and kicked himself right in the face. Ah, oh, it was properly brilliant. It's a real shame uh, that you couldn't see it. I'll see if I can find some better shoelaces in time for next week's show. Promise. Bye! You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents... Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. It's the end.